Good morning, and welcome to another episode of IoT Recruiting's podcast. We are pleased to be joined today by Evan Kerstel, a prominent social media influence. Welcome, Evan. Thanks very much. Evan, I'd like to get your take on the social media as it stands today. I know you have your pulse on the market pretty good. Could you give us an idea of how you think it's changed and how it's really the place it has in terms of the whole discipline right now? Yeah, well, social media is now synonymous with the Internet. It is the Internet. It's the way... People now uh, communicate, collaborate, consume content, inform each other, uh, express political views, you know, engage in commerce, et cetera, et cetera. It used to be some sort of thing that was viewed as kind of a fad or or perhaps uh, some other layer or application of the Internet. And I think now we all have come to realize through these platforms and services and applications that that social is the Internet. It's influenced everything, not the least of which is the way we search for jobs, the way we search for employees. Do you think it's it's made the task easier or more difficult, according to those that we've seen? I think both. You know, it's it's creating a, you know, a kind of a haves versus have not. You know, there are folks who really have dove into this new world of social and have, have started to build, you know, in their own way, their personal brand and profile and are leveraging these new networks for career and personal gr- uh, development and growth, and they're winners. And then there are, unfortunately, a lot of losers in the sense that, you know, they're not leveraging these new platforms, even at a basic level like LinkedIn, and relying on traditional techniques like resume blasts and, uh, y- you know, frankly, uh, j- just uh, third-party recruiters and who've missed you know, this wave, this opportunity. So it really is kind of a bifurcation of, of, of winners and losers, I think. And how much do you think it's changed the way we interact with our clients and our companies in this world today? Yeah, I think, I think it's changed everything, and, and we're only in the beginning, of course, so it, it will continue to evolve and disrupt and change. You know, there's, there's now a level of intimacy, uh, you know, personal, professional intimacy, uh, human to human, you know, intimacy in all aspects of the internet, whether it's the employee employer, whether it's the hiring manager and the employee, you know, whether it's networking with, with uh, other employees and companies, there's a level of, of, of direct contact and engagement intimacy that just hasn't existed. And, um, that's changed the way recruiters hire. It's a change the way you find a job. And, uh, you know, it's put everything on the table you know, in terms of our professional lives, our backgrounds, our personal lives. And so, yeah, what what a change from even two, three, five years ago. There's a lot of talk today about personal branding and related to recruiting and, you know, not only from the company side, but from the individual side. Talk to me a little bit about your view of personal branding and what you're seeing out there in terms of uh, personal branding. Well, you know, the, the, the phrase personal branding has been tarnished and there's a lot of negativity around this this idea of a personal brand you know it, it does generate a lot of controversy but I, I think that's more uh, semantics I, I think you know personal branding is your reputation and that's a very old concept very easy to understand and your reputation now is online and on social and it's as important as ever so so people who haven't embraced this notion of personal branding because they don't like the word or the description or the negative connotation, should think of it more as, you know, building your reputation and establishing your credentials and putting it out there for others to see in a positive way. So in that sense, you know, I, I really consider it important. And no matter what your profession or interests, you know, if you can be genuine and authentic and consider it uh, a tool uh, and not necessarily boastful or, or deceitful, I think there's a big, there's just great value in it, no matter what you're doing, what what industry you're in, what your profession is. Do you think branding makes it uh, easier or more difficult to recruit when you use social media as part of that? What have you seen out there in in the marketplace? Well, I think it is the way to get noticed uh, personally, professionally, and by the way, with recruiters and hiring managers directly. So if, if you're not out there with, you know, a great LinkedIn profile, you know, a presence, a blog of some kind uh, that highlights your talents, it's going to be that much harder. I mean, the key is to have recruiters, employers, clients, business partners find you. And, you know, and the only way to do that are through, through these new platforms. And so it's really, it's really important. I mean, it's, uh, 
it's not something you can avoid forever. I mean, it's it's something you want to start working at today. What have you seen out there in terms of companies uh, like best practices or examples of things that are companies that are doing that are new and unique and maybe a little bit different than the normal thing that people are doing? Do you have a couple examples of that you could share with us? Yeah, I think there are companies that are doing it well, like companies like IBM or Salesforce, you know, very big companies are recruiting really armies of of employees as sort of social ambassadors, you know, cultivating and nurturing, encouraging their employees to be social, you know, with some policies and procedures, best practices on the back end, you know, but that you know, the employee as an advocate, the employee as a, you know, an ambassador on social networks is a pretty powerful tool. And companies, you know, big companies are starting to recognize that and embrace it. You know, some companies aren't, and I think they will lose out in the long term. Uh, And then, of course, there are smaller companies or startups who who are using social as a tremendous competitive weapon. You just look yesterday at what happened with SpaceX. Of course, beyond the the brilliance of, you know, sending a rocket to Mars, there's all the the, the free media, you know, the the earned media they got through their efforts. Uh, and focus on the brand that'll pay off in spades. So, yeah, there are a lot of companies doing it right, and sadly, a lot of companies not doing it at all. If you would kind of look in your crystal ball and see what kind of changes we'll see in the next couple years, what would you say to someone in terms of what the landscape will will be like two years from now and how that'll be different than today? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's really more of the same. You know, engagement and participation in these social platforms is high. It'll be even higher uh, and and younger and older, you, you know, and as more, you know, different segments and communities, geographies globally uh, participate and engage on social. And, you know, with with, you know, the networks that we have now, much more uh, video and interactivity and, uh, you know, even AR and VR coming into the social construct. So it'll be a much more immersive and, and interesting space even than it is today. Where do you see artificial intelligence and VR playing its part uh, in this area, Evan? Well, AI and social is, is interesting. There are features and, and functions that are being built into AI platforms to make it more relevant and context-aware and easier to use and you know making connections more interesting and appealing. So I think all the big platforms are looking to build in AI into their services to make them more elegant and more seamless, more usable, you know, make the whole user experience better. So to the end user, they probably won't even aware that their AI, you know, capabilities and features being built in. But of course, they're going to be infused throughout these social networks. And, you know, VR is early days, but I think given the rise of really interesting applications for VR of new and low cost uh, headsets, you know, if AR tools being built in by Google and Apple into their devices, you're just going to see an AR explosion in apps. And it's only a matter of time between the social, you know, these social platforms really make AR really easy to use and compelling and fun, more, more importantly. So, you know, all of that, of course, uh, will be, you know, leveraged by advertisers and uh, third party content providers and, and, and companies as well in various ways. So it's going to be a fun, fun space to watch. Absolutely. What advice do you have for the everyday user or people that have not really gotten into it very much? Or, or what advice do you have for them in terms of, you know, getting their feet wet and getting on the ground in terms of social media? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, honestly, it's it's just to you know, kind of document your journey. And no matter what that is, I mean, if you're uh, an accountant going into a nine to five job at a big insurance company, maybe you don't think you have much to share, but actually... Your, your insights and views on accounting and working in a big company and your journey and your, your experiences are, are actually kind of relevant to a lot of other people like you and your peers and others out there. So I would encourage people much more to document what they're doing and versus trying to be a cre- you know, creative necessarily. We're not all creative creators. And if you are, that's great. But if you're not, there's a lot you can do just documenting your life and your journey, your professional life, personal life that, that people will find interesting. And the other is, you know, make sure you're curating content. You know, if you're interested in, in you know, agricultural tech or agriculture or farming or gardening, you know, and that's your passion, you know, curate content around that topic and get immersed in it. And you'll find uh, like-minded people all over the place. And you can build, you know, quite a, an interesting community and audience uh, around your, that passion or any passion you might have. Great. 
Well, Evan, thank you very much for your input today. We appreciate it very much. We look forward to continuing to follow you on social media and see uh, kind of where, where this all turns up. Thanks very much. Thanks for the opportunity and great, great catching up.